President Michael D. Higgins, who never expressed concern about billionaire tech monopolies before, is suddenly very worried now that one plans to reinstate free speech. This is Ben Scallon and you're watching Gripped Media. Last week, President Michael D. Higgins became the latest member of Official Ireland to express abject horror at Elon Musk's Twitter buyout. Is it a great success that a multi-billionaire would be now deciding uh, what is appropriate for people to exchange by way of discourse? Uh, I think it can hardly be described as anything other than a manifestation of an incredible and dangerous narcissism. Now, I'm not exactly sure how it's narcissism to spend your own money on a company and promise to restore free speech for ordinary users, but regardless, the most amusing part of all this is Higgins' assertion that multi-billionaires will now be deciding what people can say online. As if this is some brand new phenomenon and not the status quo for the past decade or more. For starters, when Jack Dorsey stepped down as CEO of Twitter just last year, he was worth $12 billion according to Bloomberg. That is to say, Twitter was owned by a multi-billionaire for years until just a few months ago. This apparently posed no problem whatsoever to Higgins, as he never mentioned it or raised it once as an issue before this. Moreover, Instagram, WhatsApp and Facebook are owned by Mark Zuckerberg, who is worth $75.8 billion. Again, this is clearly no problem to Higgins, we've never heard a squeak out of him objecting to this. Snapchat is owned by Evan Spiegel, who is worth $13 billion. Many streaming services and online shopping websites are owned by Jeff Bezos, $150 billion, and he even owns media outlets like the Washington Post. TikTok's owner is worth $59.4 billion, etc, etc. Now, once again, Higgins never had a problem with any of this, or at least not that he said, nor did he have a problem with many of these sites censoring people for expressing vaguely conservative opinions, or even just views that aren't radically far left. But suddenly, out of the blue, when one billionaire claims he's going to restore free speech on Twitter, we're apparently to believe that this is an incredibly dangerous development, where now billionaires will be able to control what we say and think. Because think about what Musk is actually claiming. Whether you love the guy or hate the guy, he's not said he's going to start censoring this or that person or controlling speech online. Precisely the opposite. He says he bought Twitter to prevent that from happening. Musk calls himself a free speech absolutist, saying that, quote, free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy and Twitter is the digital town square where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated. He later added, I hope that even my worst critics remain on Twitter because that is what free speech means. There is absolutely zero indication that Musk intends to begin a reign of terror blocking and censoring people left, right and center. Rather, that is what his big tech billionaire peers do, which Higgins appears to be fine with. The president didn't care when the Babylon Bee was banned for misgendering someone in a joke. He didn't care when the democratically elected president of the United States was collectively silenced and purged by a handful of unelected mega corporations. He didn't care when the HSE was directing Twitter to censor posts as misinformation, which were not false in any sense. All of that was perfectly fine and acceptable apparently. But letting everyone speak and express their own opinions on topical issues? Well, that's when Michael D starts panicking it seems. At the end of the day, perhaps we shouldn't be too surprised that a man who praised ruthless communist dictator Fidel Castro is appalled by the very notion of free expression. The selective fake outrage around this story from the entire woke Irish establishment demonstrates clearly just how far down their list of priorities free speech for ordinary people really is. Please like and share this video and if you enjoyed it please consider signing up for a monthly donation via the link on screen to help us produce more content like this. Alternative media like Grips needs all the assistance it can get and every donation goes a long way. As always, thanks for watching.